Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Laura Kiefer speaking. I'm the chief gemologist from the Gübelin Gem Lab. And after my first series of the general gemstones of Ethiopia, I'm going today give you some insight of the black opals of Ethiopia and the black opal mines of Ethiopia. Here you can see the location map um, of the black opal mines, which is way up in the northeast, stage black opal, it says. Uh, a little bit further south, only 30 kilometers away, uh, is Wegeltena, the white opal deposit. So now we have uh, the location of the stage uh, mine where the black star is. We go a little bit into the geology. We have 25 of Ethiopia is covered by Proterozoic rocks. 25 is covered by late Paleozoic rocks and Mesozoic ones. And 50% is covered by Cenozoic rocks and these also contain the opal deposits. The exposed Cenozoic rocks in the area with opals are volcanic with several paleozoils and thin volcanoclastic sediments. So you have a huge three kilometer high series. And then in between you have uh, times when a soil was formed and then again a volcanoclastic sediments on top of it and basalts again. This is the mining site of the White Weller Opal. And uh, you see several sequences of this white ash layer, but only in the one where you have the little arrow, this is where the opals are fine. There's only one layer. And if you go to the other side, the 30 kilometers further north, um, you have the same sequence and again, the same layer where they find the black opal. And if you go around the corner from the right image there, this is where we visited the mine, the right image. Uh, you see another deposit, but this was a little bit more into soil and not so much into rock. So it was quite dangerous to go there, actually. So we did not visit this one, but we visit the one to the right. This is on the way down. I give you some impressions of that you get a feel for the landscape there. Here, the climb down took about half an hour. Sometimes fairly easy, sometimes quite hard to get there. And you can see that the sequence uh, continues all around. And there are canyons that are about one kilometer deep. And you can also see this little village in the bottom there. This little village is that the people say that the people there never got out of that valley. Here we are at the mine site, and you can see these little holes there. This is actually a layer of 60 centimeters high where they are digging in to get the opal out. It is at the interface between the clay rich layer and the rhyolitic rock above. The tunnels in themselves are very shallow, as you could see, and they extend between 5 and 15 meters into the rock. Now I show you two movies that going into the mine and in the mine. Uh, my colleague Pierre Hardy was going in. I did not dare. And you can follow him into the mine and see how it looks inside and what he found in there. No, so you stay about this distance, okay? Yeah, yeah, no problem, okay. Nice. The initial phase is quite rough. You coming? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, okay. Come, come. Ah. Uh. Yeah, the other side. Oh. Many are gone. Oh God. Okay. 
Ready to fight? Yeah? Yeah. 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 Come on. Okay. You don't want to record. You have to. I see video. Show me. Video, yeah, video. You sure? Yeah. You can see it's quite a call in there. Now we are inside. So we found quite a few nice bits. I'm right there, one meter away from the face. And we're shoveling to try to find some more. I have already a sample bag with some rocks here, right there, that I just collected what came off from the face. It's looking very good. I have already some uh, black material in there. Atom top, Kagan. In the last one. Sample? Yeah, I to the Yeah, I have to look at the other one. Yeah, I have to look at the other one. Yeah, I have to look at the this one. It's not always black. Uh, but the out at in this control. That we will take. We can we take two? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ah, here. Oh, no. Maybe not. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this. 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 Ah, yeah. That's black. This. Yeah. Fresh. Fresh from the wall. Actually, it looks quite dark brown. Depends on the the area. They get dark brown to black. I mean, this is pretty much black to me. We will check out the same samples outside. Make some photos. Good. Okay. Yeah. This uh, piece. Yeah. Yeah, piece. Okay. Yeah. This. This. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. This, yeah. This, that's this. good. Yeah. Very good. Oh, wow. we have one in the face. Hold on, one second. <laughs> we have a big one. Ah. Okay. okay, so this is black opal in the face. Beautiful. Very nice. Okay, okay while Pierre had his fun inside the mine, meanwhile I had my fun outside of the mine because I was shown many of the samples that the miners have found over the past weeks and one was more beautiful than the other one. Here are the miners, they were waiting in some distance, the whole village came to visit us to see what we were doing there and these are the people that are actually doing the mining. The law in Ethiopia is that only the miners, the people, can mine on which village the mine is on. So there cannot be somebody else from another village coming wanting to mine for, it can only be the people from that village. Here are some people showing us their stones. Here my colleague outside of the mine with the fresh rock, with the fresh pieces that he brought out. And here a bag full of goods that they collected during the last two weeks before uh, when Teddy was there the last time. Back in the hotel we inspected these samples that were in the bags and this is what we found. Beautiful reflexes, nice big pieces. 
and back in Addis Abeba, Teddy showed us some more of his large pieces, and you can see that some of them are really enormous. These are two special pieces that I would like to show you. The left one is a 10 centimeter long full opal. You can see the patches everywhere, and it was fully opal, what you can see in our hands. The right one has this leopard pattern made of common opal that is surrounding the patches of precious opal. And please note the shiny surface, and I get back to this one in a moment. This is a microscopic, uh, microscopic image of the black opal surface. You can see again common opal, gray to black, and you can see the colorful patches in between on the left side. On the right side is one of the pieces that normally break. Some of the pieces can break and shatter. This is one of those pieces. But you can see again there a dense surface like what we already mentioned in the picture before. And that means these pieces are not porous, which also means they cannot take up any liquid or they cannot take up any color or treatment. I am mentioning that because at the beginning when these black opals came out, everybody said, well, they are treated. They are not natural. There are treated black opal and it looks nearly like the natural black opal, but it's made from the white velo opal. The white velo opal is very porous and it can soak up liquid very easily. So it can also soak up soot and it can also so soak up dye. Here is one of those treated black opals from Velo, treated by the German Gemological Institute in Eder Oberstein. And you can already see that the surface of the left untreated sample is sort of dull. And then after smoke treatment, you can see the dark cover around it. When you look at a treated black opal, you can see the pores. And I mentioned to you before, the black, natural black opal doesn't have these. It's a very shiny surface. And in the pores, after treatment, you see the dark spots. You can see it in the pores, you can see it in the fissures, and you can see it in the polish lines. Here, fissures to the right, polish marks on the left, and here, polish marks and pores or cavities filled on the left side. The center is a smoke treated sample done by Bear Williams, and the right is an opal that was smoke treated by Millie Sender, again in Ida Oberstein, and afterwards it was dipped into water resulting in a stone breaking into many pieces. But you can see there, especially, that the dark color is only confined to the outside, maybe going a few millimeters in, but not very much. Now, how can we detect if it is a treated one or not? One of the methods is the microscopy, like I showed you before. And the other method is, of course, Raman spectroscopy. Uh, the black color does come from organic carbon. And you can see the amorphous organic carbon peaks are situated at around 1340 and 1597 centimeters at minus one in the natural opals. And these are also found in natural Australian black opal, these peaks. And on the left side, you see an untreated dark yellow opal and on the bottom, you see a treated velo opal. And you can see that the Raman spectrum is completely different from the one on the right side. Now I mentioned the porosity or hydrophenity. We have tested five samples. We weighed them in air. We had them in water for about five minutes and we Measure the weight increase, and the weight increase in percentage is less than 0.02. So it's nearly nothing. In uh, Velo Opal, you can have a weight increase of 
1-2% in the same amount of time soaking it. And then the chemical composition. I only look at the barium oxide content and it's only been measured with EDXIF. So in the one deposit that we did not visit, we had barium oxide from below the detection limit to about 160 ppm. In the deposit that we visited, the opus had 450 to 2250 ppm. We know that black opals from volcanic origin have below 100 ppm and that we have sedimentary barium oxide with values between 300, uh, 100 and 300 ppm. Ours had much more, but it's barium oxide and not barium that we have found in the literature. So a small summary. Just like the white feather opal, the black opal is found in the same stratigraphic layer. And the contact is between a clavage layer and a rhyolitic nimbrite. Unlike the white opal, the black opal mostly occurs in the form of nodules, while the white opal is a space filler between pieces of organic rock debris. The black color is due to amorphous organic carbon with Raman spectra that are similar to the Australian black opal, and the Australian black opal derives its color from fossil microbes. Porosity tests showed that the black opal to the contrary of white opal shows virtually no increase in weight. The opal can be considered volcano sedimentary or even more sedimentary than volcano. It is shown by the chemical composition, mainly the barium content. But these values have to be confirmed by ICPMS measurements. And with this, I thank you very much. Stay safe, stay home and stay tuned. Goodbye. Thank you.